Dear Diary. Dear Diary. Dear Diary. Wow. Today was a really hard day. Dear Diary, I find sometimes my life can be hard. Dear Diary, it will pass and it will be okay. Dear Diary, I feel like today is going to be... Shh, the Indigo Diaries. Dear Diary, welcome world to the Indigo Diaries. First, let me introduce myself and back to series one, The World Through Your Eyes, with me, Tasha Hicklin. The Indigo Diaries is a podcast for those who want to learn about ADHD through others' experience. So thanks everyone for coming in and listening. And if it is your first time, then as always, welcome. And if you're returning, then welcome back. And just a reminder that you'll be getting a lot more guests in this series. And I'm so excited to introduce our new guest. So I'm just going to get straight into it. I say this every time I'm so excited, but this one, I'm even more excited. So this guest I've known for a while now after kind of connection on Instagram, and I was so privileged to go on her podcast called Rising Above the Stigma a few months ago to talk about the challenges of overcoming ADHD. And after speaking with her, I just knew that I, I just, I, you know, you just get that instant connection with some people and she's just so lovely, so funny, so passionate about what she does. So I knew that I would love to have her on this platform to tell her story. So here we are, and I'm very excited to introduce us, and I know this is going to be a lot of fun. And I know the last time we connected, I just, I could just couldn't, I left just laughing and smiling, and it really set myself up for my day. So let me introduce her. Welcome, Cheryl. Hi. Good evening, good morning, good day, whatever the time is. (laughs) Love that international community. (laughs) Yes, yes. Okay. Thank okay. you so much for having me. No, I'm excited. Me too. So let me tell you a bit about Shao. The podcast host of Rising Above the Stigma, podcast author, comedian, inspirational, motivational speaker, and the founder of DIVA International LLC. Shell empowers women, especially single women and single mothers, to live a full of per- life of purpose, hope, encouragement, laughter, and remember the treasures they have within so they more boldly walk out their God-given destiny. Oh, I love that. And please look at the full bio, which is in the description, as always, below. So, Pearl, I'm show the Pearl. I love it. I can't <laughs> wait. I'm so excited. So, my first question to you is, when did ADHD come into your life? Mm. Uh, the, I mean, you know, you learn to get the shorter answer with the ADHD. The first answer... 2007 was when it was official. Yes, Mm. that was when uh, it was confirmation for what I had known for many years of my life. Not known, but struggled, let's say, Mm. from, I would say, as far back as junior high school, I recall, um, would be how far back that I recall the pain of what I had to deal with without knowing what it was. Okay, so can you tell us a little bit about kind of what it was like back then and how how it kind of led to that 2007 diagnosis? Certainly. Thank you so much for asking. Well, for me, it was very, um, at that that time in my life, because I did not know what was going on with myself, it was also a time... um, I was blessed to have multi-level family, if you will, meaning that I didn't grow up with my biological family. So I was adopted. So of course that leads to its own set of um, inadequate feelings Mm -hmm. sometimes if it's not nurtured correctly. And so therefore I knew I was different. You know, I knew I had the the funny side that always just kind of naturally came with me there. Uh, So laughter allowed me to, um, deal with the pain of Mm. what's wrong with you what's going on you Mm. know and I had feelings of feeling that I was uh and this is truth you know feeling that I was dumb feeling that I was stupid you know I had heard um something stated to me when I was younger that you know uh because I was born as a breech baby you know they said babies like that were at that time it was stated to me was retarded so you had that one word that stuck with me in the back mm-hmm. of my head, knowing that I'm adopted and uh, 
and, you know, and, and growing up in that uh, as an only child. So you're also now feeling double alone, even though you would have go around family and you have fun because I knew how to laugh and have fun. But I, I guess I had the ability to make people laugh, not on purpose. And so what happened was I had these strong, inadequate feelings yeah. and I was in school and I if it was something that I really liked, I'd excelled at it mm. very much. So, you know, it was easy to make the A's and things of that nature, but I was an average uh, student, you know, C student. But when I got to the point, I remember in English one time, uh, I think I was in the point of getting ready to fail the class. So wow. at the last minute, I remember, uh, you know, there's that laser hyper-focus that comes yeah, in play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. And so yeah. I'm up like late at night trying to crank out this term paper and trying to do what I needed to do for English and I needed to get an A if not I was going to fail the class so thank god I got a 92 wow. but I didn't know yes but I didn't know that, that what I was um, on the grind if you will like that that, that yeah. was hyper focused I didn't know that until many many years later and so you know I'm going about life and I'm the class clown because I that was my way of covering up for feeling stupid and again, I had fun with laughter, but I also felt very inadequate. And at the time, the spirit of comparison was very strong in my life. Yeah. The spirit of rejection was very strong in my life. The spirit of abandonment was very strong in my life. So the two things I did have positively going for me was the fact of the matter of being a natural encourager that God had gifted me with, as well as the ability to laugh. Mm -hmm. So many times I use laughter as a way to hide um, you know, the pain. And then it was huge insecurity. So, you know, uh, in school, uh, I didn't understand. I remember in 10th grade where it was the icing on the cake. We had to take, I think it was the ASVAB test. And I kept having to read the paragraph over and over. Yeah. Or you'd read the paragraphs, let's say it's about three or four, let's say. And at that point in time, you know, in your classroom, or I think we were in a lunchroom cafeteria, whatever, taking this test. And so everybody had a certain amount of time to take it. And so I'm feeling really stupid. I'm at a private school and everything. And here I am taking this test and everybody looks like they're done. And so I had to keep going back. I would read, let's say, I don't know, John went to the store, Jane got bread, Mary bought lemons. I don't know. Let's just say, you know, and by the end of the story, you had to say, well, what did John buy? I don't know what John bought. I had to go back and reread it. <laughs> so I kept going back and I'm thinking, but I couldn't articulate this. In yeah. my head, I just kept thinking, what the heck is wrong with me? So then I had all those other things. That's why I shared those other things because now you have this insecurity, you know, you're not wanted or, you know, and all of this is just mounting up. So I went through and made it through school and graduated, you know, all of that. Again, just an average student. I remember failing geometry the first time around, got a big old fat goose egg zero and not really a zero, but I got an F and I was like, oh my God. So you feel defeated. You feel yeah. like you're just a nobody. You just feel, I mean, I, for me, I felt, you know, like I was stupid. That Those are the words that I was telling myself back then, and I internalized it. And yeah. so, because um, on my face, you saw a smile, but on inside, I was internalizing it big time. Yeah. And so what happened was I got a... Um, uh, oh, so I had to take the class the second time, I remember, because it was the fall semester and I had to take it and everybody else has gone on. And again, I'm laughing, but on the inside, I'm feeling so inadequate, so small, so like I don't matter. But oh. I made through life each and every day. And so that one, I remember I passed that with an 88. I remember these numbers because it was like, oh, this is great. It meant yeah. that, hey, I'm not dumb. I'm really, you know, I really can do this stuff. But then the other classes that I avoided, I'm not taking calculus. We're not doing that. You know, so I avoided <laughs> that, you know, if I didn't have to take it, you yeah, know, or, yeah. um, you know, because I just felt like, oh, and I hated science anyway. So it was, you know, it wasn't that great of a thing anyway for me. But yeah, that's kind of the, what I remember back from the high school days. And wow. there's, you know, more um, that led to the 2007. So yeah, you let me yeah. know if you want me to expound further. I don't want to monopolize the conversation <laughs> but yeah <laughs> no this is your episode I I I love that you said like now I look back you know I just kind of you know every day was every day but that internalizing that kind of that dumb the stupid and all those things mm -hmm. yes and covering up and not being able to articulate in those exams like that must have been a lot and that must yes. have been like how did that kind of how did you kind of like get through that? Like, did that carry on into adulthood, that kind of internalization? 
Oh, yes. Oh, 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 without fail. Mm -hmm. um, again, like I said, the thing, laughter, I had the ability to make people laugh. I didn't particularly realize that. Just, you know, people would, I'm being myself and I just yeah. can't help, you know, being comedic. That's me. I realized that and I had to accept that, okay, that's a part of who, you know, I, the way I'm wired and the way I've made. And so I was also the natural encourager because I remember, you know, telling somebody, oh, you look nice today or this, you know, I'd say something nice or I wanted to have everything be in a peaceful manner. I was always wanting people to get along, you know, but yet I had this real spirit of a timidity within myself. You know, I never wanted to hurt anybody's feelings, but if I did, but once you heard mine and I got offended, oh boy, then it took a moment for me to shut my mouth, you know, because now I'm just like, eh, letting it all out. So, you know, you, you kind of hold it in. So life goes on, get, mm -hmm. you know, through school and I was on my way to college and, um, I thought I was, but then life happened, you know, you get, yeah. uh, you fall in love and all that. So, you know, I got married young and, um, you know, and young and stayed married for a little bit and then, you know, later got divorced. But, um, yes, yeah, so I was able to, you know, um, find love or be in love, you know, early on and all that, but I'm still too young at that point in time. I was yeah. too immature because I didn't know who I was. Yeah. And that's what, that's one of the reasons that I'm driven by purpose because, I find that there's value in that. And so life goes along and it was very troubling work-wise in a sense, because you have this insecurity that you're dealing with, inferiority complex, or however you want to say, inadequacy, I guess is a better word. And so sometimes I wouldn't apply for different positions, leadership, let's say, because I'm thinking, because I was in the financial industry, I'm thinking that, oh, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings if yeah. I have to tell them that maybe they're not working up to par. You know, I internalized that. And so I kept myself at a limiting ceiling in the sense because yeah. I thought this is what it was. But again, I did not know what I had. I just remember going off to college. I took some college classes and I remember, wait a minute, why do I got to take this test again? Or why do I have to take this class again? And, and I was going to school for, um, well, originally I wanted to go to for communications, journalism, but then I switched over to finance and marketing. And then I switched again. You know, I kept thinking, <laughs> Why do I keep switching? You know, didn't realize what was going on. Yeah, and yeah. so as time um, unfolded, I remember I was in accounting, taking accounting too, because I was going to be a CPA with my own tax accounting wow. firm. That was uh, one of the um, I guess dreams that I had. And it was sort of like, I really learned later that that was just a skill I had, yeah. but not necessarily my passion, what I was called to do. So I remember um, taking accounting too. And I, well, at that time, because now the marriage is going pff, flopping, you know, so I couldn't mm. focus. So I had to wind up withdrawing from the um, accounting two class, you know, but I still kept the dream at that time taxes, a CPA and all that never became the CPA, obviously, you know, but, um, for a long time, I carried the torch and then that, you know, dream just kind of fizzled out. So I had to take the class again, but I struggled every time I got to a certain point in that class. Cause it was my second time taking accounting too. Mm. And I'm like, what in the world is it? So, um, I just said, okay, you know what, let me just leave this be. And, um, during that struggle with that, I remember, um, let me see, I'm trying to remember back now. Um, <laughs> oh, that's what I was going to say. Yes, the executive functioning, the recall yeah. was what the biggest thing was for me. And again, I know these words now and can describe it, but back then, I didn't know what in the world, executive, who, what? I didn't know what an executive functioning was. I didn't know what being able to, the, the ability to be able to recall um, what yeah. something was. I, I did not understand that. And so that was my biggest struggle, no matter what it was in life. So I was able to go on and everything and still be joyful and things like that. But internally, I still had this huge insecurity that I was walking around with. And remember, I said I had the other stuff, the baggage that goes along with being adopted yeah. and all the other rejection stuff and abandonment, all that stuff. So low, low self-esteem, you name it, that went along with that. So you have all that going on on one hand, and then mm -hmm. later you realize, wait a minute, what's going on? So you begin to, you know, you have, then, you know, you start your life over again. And then of course, you know, you have a family. And then my son who has, um, and, and it's not a problem with me sharing that because I interviewed him, of course, you know, had him share his story about ADHD. Yeah. So as I was learning and studying more so about him, I began to say, wait a minute now, 
wait a minute, wait, <laughs> wait, a, minute. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, okay, <clears throat> wait a minute, you know, he's answering the questions, and I'm like, wait a minute, okay, or, you know, daughter's answer, I said, wait a minute, okay, this sounds familiar, too familiar, okay, and I began to think, wait a minute, and I felt like what I dealt with from teenage years, yeah. or, you know, now I'm beginning to see the light, like, oh my God, is this what's wrong with me? Remember, because I'm still living under yeah. the umbrella of something is wrong with me. And like, oh my God. And I used to cry at the drop of a hat when I was younger, you know, early teens up into probably up into the very low twenties. And I would cry, you know, because I didn't want to hurt somebody's feelings or yeah. if mine got hurt. Oh my God, I was crying, you know, like a cry baby, you know, oh, you know, if I couldn't be a part of this, or if I couldn't do that, you know, that, oh my God, I can't even... I can't even believe now that that's not even who I was, but I was that person back then. And so um, it was painful because you, you, you felt like you just wasn't enough. Yeah. And so you, you want to find your value. You don't feel like you have any value, anything like that whatsoever. And so I go on in life and then on top of that, I felt um, not only the other rejection issues that go with adoption. Then you have the issues that go along with ADHD. Then on top of that, I thought I was ugly. So yeah, I got all this going on in my head and here I'm walking around day to day to day and I'm supposed yeah. to have this joy. Again, smiling, laughing, but you don't know the internal darkness that I was feeling. When I say darkness, meaning that I just didn't have the belief in myself. So then life mm. comes along and I become um, a, a Christian that God comes into my life and then I began to build upon that. And I began to learn about purpose. I began to learn about me having value. And it took me years to get to yeah. the point of finally realizing that I matter and that I, I don't have to live, you know, that way anymore. So, you know, of course, life goes along. And in 2007, you know, as I'm going through with my kids and family and stuff like that, I'm like, okay, now wait a minute. And the kids is you know, confirm the, wait a minute, let mama get herself checked out. <laughs> <laughs> so wait a minute, mama needs to go get checked. And I had done a lot of research. I found out about Chad. I had found out about um, all the different things that you could name that was attached to ADD because mm -hmm. I had done homeschool. You know, I, I knew the different curriculums. That I, you know, I, I did it all. And so finally I went and I'll never forget sitting there with the psychologist, psychiatrist, all of that, because, you know, that word trip, oh, psychiatrist, oh, you're crazy, you know, because you were told you were yeah. crazy when you were younger. And, and I'm thinking, oh, God, wait a minute. And, and so, you know, as I become a Christian, you know, you got to stand on what God says about you. And it took my head a long time to transition to what God says about me because I had so many muddy spots. I had so many, so much rubble that needed to be blown up. And so yeah, I can re yeah. reprogram my mind to what I'm really supposed to think about myself. And so I remember sitting in the office there in um, Baltimore, Maryland there and the psychiatrist, uh, psychologist, whatever it was, point being, she was telling me, what the issue was because I needed to know what was really going on with me because yeah. now I've gone through the point of now you know I, I begin to get affirmation about myself so now the low self-esteem has um you know gone now the spirit of rejection the spirit of abandonment all of that I've learned <clears throat> how to overcome God it's healed my heart and then I had to let go mm. bitterness unforgiveness all of that so it took some time you know yeah. then I had to get through all of that and so then I began to think and I went through a little bit of counseling too and so I'm like oh, wait a minute now so as we're sitting there and I'm answering these questions she said Miss Randolph you already know the answer to what I'm going to say. She said, you've done excellent homework. You already know what I'm going to confirm. And so I finally had a solid answer to know that, oh, I'm this way. My brain processes that way. And it's because yeah. of the ADHD. And, and my, it, you know, I know they now say ADHD, but it was under the umbrella of ADD. Yeah. And so I'm like, oh, my God, finally. Mm -hmm. finally there's an answer but I sat there I'll tell you um and cried just for a moment because when she asked me a particular part of the test and you had to recall what was just on the page before remember I said back in yeah uh, in school, grade, I believe it was, yeah. and you had to read that paragraph you know what me three minutes later you had to go back and give the answer without going back and reading I had to keep going back and rereading and I couldn't understand what was wrong and I'm looking around the rest of the class and I'm like mm. what the heck is wrong with me and I'm internalized this but never said it so she said to me 
This is executive functioning. That's where I learned about that and about the ability to recall. And I said, oh my God. And I could see, it was like my life played like a movie screen and I could see all the parts of my life where I struggled to recall, you know, school, yeah. um, friendships when I would be telling the story, you know, now the funny thing was <laughs> because I had such a love for, you know, at that time, the boys, the men, it was easy <laughs> to remember. Wait a minute. I went on a date. Uh, it was, uh, uh, January 5th, uh, 1922, whatever, you know, something like that. And I'm like, oh, I remember what was happening at that time because I was seeing Johnny or uh, Petro or whatever at that time. So he was acting this way. So that was connected to, and that's how I can remember it. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, very vivid. Yes. Remember, you know, well, wait a minute, what happened at this time? And so my one friend was like, you got a brain like an elephant. I said, no, I don't. I said, I just, what year was that? I said, oh yeah, I was talking to this person. <laughs> You know, so I would yeah, it's so like my- <laughs> it's so strange that you can just like you like someone's like, what did you just read? I have no idea, but in nineteen twenty, blah blah blah, <laughs> I was speaking to this person. I could smell this. Yes. I was wearing this. We said yes. this conversation exactly. Yeah, it's so <laughs> up and down. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. So that that was me, and so but two thousand seven was when it was actually confirmed, and she mm. explained to me. Uh, what was going on but I remember sitting there crying and the reason I sat there and just a couple tears of shit but I remember and now I had learned enough to understand what was going on with my mindset it was because there was and I learned about triggers so there was a trigger because I could not do what she had asked me to do on the prior page and I mean because you had to look at the shapes or whatever and you had to be able to say what this was or recall there's some things I can but at that point in time I remember tears and and she was very good and she said it's okay Miss Randolph it's okay and what it was um it triggered old thoughts and old feelings even though things had um you know, on one hand, I was no longer feeling the inadequacies. And this is what I learned. I said, now, wait a minute, God, and I get over all the other low self-esteem in general about myself. But then I realized there was a whole nother level of inadequacies that come along all by themselves with ADHD, all by themselves. Yeah. And then there comes the stigma that goes along yeah, with it. And yeah. so now I'm having to, okay, so no longer dealing with the uh, the monkey on my back from the adopted child and, you know, feeling yeah, like the black yeah. hole and all that. Don't have that anymore. Now I got to deal with the stigma of ADD yeah. and in the workplaces and, you know, and feeling like, oh, well, you're not working fast enough or you're not doing this you know mm. you do good work but wait a minute can you keep up and so now you go back to wait a minute wait a minute now i got set free from the other part wait a minute now what's going on here so then yeah. you have to rise above another stigma and so i'm like oh god you know so yeah. i begin to try to teach myself how to manage um you know the add and that's and of course i had already knew about the different medications and different things so i was just realizing what was available, what tools, um, tried to self-manage things myself. And then the accountability pieces is, is what also um, is very key. You know, even in my mm. present day life, you know, having accountability um, to help me stay focused and things like that and accountable in addition to myself. So it's kind of, you know, I, I know I may have jumped around and tried to um, no, expound upon, you know, that, you know, time frame. So yeah, it was um, challenging mm. and, um, you know, I survived through that, but it's still, I still deal with it on a daily basis. Yeah, and so I use different mechanisms to kind of overcome, but it's refreshing when others can understand, you know, because sometimes, yeah. you know, we'd have people say, oh, well, yeah, we all might forget things sometimes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're all yeah, trying yeah, to do this. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's not, not the same because this is a consistent thing that we deal with on an all the time basis. Yeah. It's not just every now and then. You know, you you get to know mm-hmm. yourself. You're like, no, wait a minute now. No, th- this here, mm-mm. this is not just. Oh yeah, we all like that. No, no, no. This is really something. The way your brain processes. Yeah. So then you have to now go through um, affirming yourself, even just because of the way that you are with um, ADD. So yeah, yeah, that's a bit of my, uh, you know, story. It was tough to overcome. But um, like I said, I do still deal with it on a daily basis, you know, but I'm a lot better because I've learned a whole lot along mm. the way. Yeah. So wow. well, long thank you. answer there. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you, this is your story. It's it's not a it's not a it, it's not like a if it was an easy story where it was like, okay, once upon a time this happened, this happened, okay, the end, then we probably wouldn't be on this podcast, would we? <laughs> so 
but there's a lot I want to unpick here. So uh, no the first problem. thing I kind of wanted to ask is about that kind sure. of articulation, because I think like what you said about when you were a child, kind of in that moment of, you know, going reading and, you know, Tim said this and, you know, Harry yes. said this, and then you have right. to remember and then you can't articulate it. Right. You're not able to articulate what exactly what's going on because you're not aware of it. Right. So when That's you correct. were you said when you were diagnosed, that lady said about executive functioning and things like that. How did, were you able then to articulate yourself when it came to the struggles? Well, the funny thing is, um, thank you for the question. My very close friends would always say to me, and this is, you know, that they, they have known me for years. Um, and even another friend I've known for, I'd say, at least 10 years or more. She would say, well, Cheryl, she said, I don't see the ADD. She says, because you articulate yourself so well. I've always been told I articulate well or I speak well. But I'm thinking, no, you, you don't get it. I really do mm. struggle with trying to, um, I won't say so much organize in a sense, because I am a you know, clean, neat type person in that sense. But when it comes to... Um, I'll give you this is a real crazy example but let's say <laughs> I could be in the middle let's say I was like reading a book or something or I was in the middle of maybe I was I don't know I don't know doing my checkbook register I don't know I'm just thinking of something <laughs> I could be doing right so all of a sudden someone has to um you know, go to the um, restroom. I'm talking about, you know, the kids or whatever. And so, <clears throat> um, so all of a sudden, you know, somebody's getting ready to go to the bathroom. And then mm. I stop when I'm going, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I said, but I was getting ready to go to the bathroom next. You know, so it's like I'm prompted by um, the, the pressure of, mm. okay, now you, you have to do something because now you get stuck in this mode. And like, oh, wait a minute. Somebody kind of shakes you up out of it. And it'd be the funniest thing. And I go, mom, I was getting ready to go in there. You know, so we had a different place there or whatever. And I'm like, oh man. And so it would kind of like uh, wake me up, shake me up, if you will, you know, yeah. um, down to the wire on time frame. You know, I was a part of a newsletter on, that I used to write years ago with a company I used to work for. And every time we have the meetings, they said, sure. Also, what, what's your column going to be about this time? <laughs> and, and listen, I would take the time to actually um, draft out what it was going to be. And never, mm. ever did the inspiration hit me until the day that it was due. And so yeah. I'm like, oh, my God. So, I, I, you know, I didn't know at the time. Um, and that was also when I was in college you know, you'd have these books that you got to read and, you know, you've got 50, 100 pages, you got to read some time in a short time. And I'd map out, okay, if I got a hundred pages, okay, I'm going to do 20 pages over five nights and I'm going to be prepared. I mean, I even did spreadsheets. I even wrote up Word documents, all fancy, mm -hmm. organized. Okay. Did I read today? Did I read these 20 pages? And I checked it <laughs> off and everything, right? You know, and I'm like, okay, and it was all pretty looking and everything. And then what would happen? Or if I had to write a, a paper, Never, ever did the inspiration come, even when I would plan mm. days ahead. And I'm like, so then I started thinking, well, what the heck is wrong? Why can't yeah. I do most people are, you know, hey, look, you know, you got 10 days to get it done. Why is it that I'm on day eight and a half and then now all of a sudden, almost nine most of the time trying to get stuff done, right? And I realized yeah. when I spoke with a um, ADH uh, coach to someone, you know, I knew of, I used to go to her meetings locally here. And she stated that um, you have to celebrate who you are. And now this is a different celebration of, you know, purpose of who you are with the ADD. And so it was a book that she had recommended mm -hmm. now. And I see there's that recall. I'm trying to remember what the, um, oh, oh, making AD, ADA, ADD work. I think that's the name of it. So okay. it was to help you like with work and then your professionalism, things of that nature. And so I began to celebrate who I was in addition to just me being Cheryl. And so I had to, and I had to begin to do that in every area of my life to be able to overcome all the um, challenges that I went through, mm. that I had to begin to, um, of course, you know, be grateful, but I had to begin to remember that I do matter and that I do yeah. have worth and that there is purpose. And so that's why I burn so passionately about purpose and vision yeah. because I don't want anybody else to go through, particularly women, single women, single moms, any of the pain that I went through. And, yeah. You know, I, I just don't want them to, and I want them to understand that they do matter and things of that nature. And um, mm. that's where my heart leans towards, you know, uh, most definitely. So yeah, that, yeah, those are some of the things.
Well, thank you for that. Yeah, and I, I, I'm, I'm forgot, Nancy. No. <laughs> you're all good. <laughs> no, you're all good. And it and it's that thing about like what you said earlier is that matter. Like when you realize you matter. And you know, I always say that like me without purpose is like a sloth. <laughs> mm. oh, like I'm wow. like a sloth with like someone with it without that purpose and without that vision and without that moving forward and celebration of who you are I'm like a stuff I can't get anything done because I haven't got that momentum right and Mm -hmm. with that but that purpose and that matter and that I matter I mean that's a huge change from when you were young and I think that's amazing that you that you are so passionate about living by that by yourself but also for others Thank you. Yes, definitely. I, I sometimes I'm like, wow, I can't even believe I'm so far removed from mm. who I used to be. And it's, I mean, I used to go around and of course, at the time we were dating my um, uh, ex-husband at that time, I, would, I, I used to look in the mirror and I would actually used to say, God, why did you make me this way when I was, yeah. you know, so I, I was just like really down trying. Now I don't walk around with my head hanging down like, oh, what was me? No, it wasn't like that because if you're around me, you know, I was like, hey, you know, laughing and cutting up. <laughs> but in the quiet moments, I look in that mirror and I'm like, yeah. why did you make me like this? You know, thinking that I was just, you know, ugly. I complained about, I said, why did you give me this flat nose? And why did you give me these? I, you know, I complained about everything on my face, you know? And I'm just like, gosh. And I just felt like, man, I was just like a nobody. And yeah. so I went through life, you know, and you just feel I'm like, okay, what, what, what is this? You know, and, and it was in 19... Uh, 80, yeah, 87. Yes, 87. Actually, I remember uh, at the time it was evangelist, his name is Evangelist Mike Murdoch. And I remember him sharing, I often have heard him share a statement about what you're willing to do for free is a good clue to what you should be doing. And I never forgot that. Mm -hmm. And so I always shared with others that statement because I was like, oh, wow. You know, so I began to think about what is that thing that you know, you really enjoy, you like, and, and, and you're passionate mm. about. And I remember, and I think that also could have, no, it was, the, it was long after that, but I remember, you know, here I am going to school to um, be an accountant and all that type of stuff and going after that. But then at the same time, something shifted in me and I'm like, no, wait a minute, yeah. this is not really what I, I, I learned that that was just a skill, but it was not the passion of what yeah. I was meant to do. And so now I'm driven by passion and uh, walking out, you know, my purpose that way. So, of course, I love when people are kind of wondering what their purpose is and things like that. Mm. And so I love to inquire of them, you know, the thing that they dream about, the thing that they, that burns within them that they're willing to do, you know, for free. And I have told that to many, many people over the years. Yeah. And so, you know, those are just some of the things as to why I'm very passionate about um purpose passionate about um people matter i'm, I'm just pausing because I'm, I'm just thinking about uh actually some different people are coming to mind that i've mm. met over the period of time even of you know recent of you know work with and things of that nature that i i recognize that true we do have treasures within and of course yeah, even the men as well you know but yeah, it's just that course, i'm yeah. called more to the um the women and it's like i said the single women and single moms yeah. but of course I remember one gentleman said to me one time, he says, don't forget about the men as well. You know, we need to hear that as well. So I do keep that in mind, Mm. uh, you know, as well. But yeah, what can you do without purpose? If you don't know your why that you exist, you just kind of wall around. It's what drives you um, every day. And I remember someone telling me a long time ago, well, you know, if you're a writer, you know, which, you know, I'm a writer, author, you know, you should be like writing every day. And then I used to beat myself up. Well, I don't write every day. I yeah, mean, every time yeah. that I was, you know, I said, well, I don't do it every day, you know, and then I had to get to the point of not living by what someone else thinks or feels, because I was also yes. very driven by other people's opinions, other people's yeah. perspectives, other people's whatever, whatever. And mm. I live my life under all of that microscope. And I'm talking about even into my, even into my adult years. So it took me um, years to get past that. I'm the type of person, let's get to the root of it. What's, what's really causing it? And so yeah, I always like yeah. to go back to the beginning so that we can nullify and we don't have to cross this bridge again. That's just how I deal with things. So I guess it's a problem solver, solver but also um, 
like I said, you know, I like to solve um, the issue. So if somebody wants to know, well, what is it that I'm supposed to be doing? Or, you know, I like asking the questions and, and inquiring of them so that I can see, as I like to call it, the light bulb that goes yeah. off in their mind or the light in their eyes that light up because they're yeah. like, I got it. I matter. What? Yeah, you mean? Yeah. I have a story that I can tell as well. What? Yeah. So I, I enjoy that. Oh, well, thank you. All for of sure. that has brought me to <laughs> today of who I am. And, and it's brought you here. Isn't it? <laughs> so <laughs> you said, right, well, we're going to have a break now and we're going to come back. And I really want to kind of go more onto this kind of what you're passionate about how you celebrate and, and kind of how you rose above the stigma. Mm. Okay. Mm. So thank you so much. No, thank you. And join us after the break and we're out. If you would like any more information on Indigo Hub or our Indigo support group, then please check out our website below or our link to our social media platforms or email at indigohub.adhd at gmail.com. If you would like to offer any comments, feedback, get support, or if you're interested in the world hearing your story, then please reach out through any of our avenues. As said before, have a positive week. Check in again later. And... We're out. The Indigo Diaries. Uh, welcome back. And as always, it's definitely a tradition. That I, I always say to myself, in the break, we won't talk for like ages. We'll just, you know, have a quick break and then get back on. But we always end up talking for ages. And <laughs> Shell was no exception. We ended up talking for probably like half an hour. And then it's like, Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're just such a fun person to talk to. So welcome back, Shell. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's been a joy. I'm enjoying myself. Good. <laughs> That's what we want. That's what we want. So if you uh, didn't hear the first half with Shell, then please go back and rewind because it was such an, she's just such an amazing woman. And I just can't wait to get into this, this second episode, this second part. So in the end, we kind of started talking about celebrating who you are and passions of the life. So, Shell, you said that you kind of started kind of having that celebration of, of kind of who you are. What does that look like? No longer, uh, well, the first thing I think about, no longer feeling uh, sad, no longer feeling like I'm carrying around a bunch of bag of rocks or whatever, that mm. heaviness, even though I'm smiling on the outside and um, you know, had the ability to, you know, people laugh and think I'm funny, even when I'm not trying to be funny. It was the lightness of, oh my goodness, finally, I don't have to carry this bag around anymore yeah. of there's something wrong with me. You know, my, I can really begin to live free, even though it's not perfect, because also it will have you live in a life of perfectionism. And that's mm. not what God calls us to do. You have your own set of rules and orders that wasn't even set out there for you. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I like that. So Thank you. I, I remember you said in the first half about like kind of after you diagnosed, you kind of got a whole lot of other stuff to deal with. You know, you kind of left the stuff of your childhood. You got a whole lot of other stuff to deal with. And you said that a lot of people would quite try and kind of relate to you like um you know I, I you know you'd say people might be like oh I forget things I forget that and I do that and and I do think that that's people's way of trying to relate to you in some way how did you kind of rise above that oh excellent question yes I remember hearing that yes you know this is the normal we all kind of do that or whichever but there was something that kept nagging with on the inside of me. No, that is not what we all do. And in one sense of the fashion, in an average sense of the fashion, yes, that is. But there's some more distinction that goes along with it when you are someone who deals with um, ADHD. There, it's, this is an everyday thing. It's not something mm. if you try to stop doing it, you, there is a struggle that goes along with it. And however the ADHD may affect you, you know, I, as I stated, mine is the 
uh, executive function and the ability to recall. Um, some may have the ability as far as lack of organization, you know, whichever it may be. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, it's different facets. And so I did my best to focus on what it was that I was, um, if you will, for lack of better words, lacking, so to speak, or it, it, the deficit in the sense. Yeah. And so I began to embrace, if you will, that part of me, because see, I didn't want to embrace that part of myself because mm -hmm. what went along with that was another stigma. And the last mm -hmm. thing I needed was another stigma of my life. So I didn't want to tell that. I didn't want to share that. I was even ashamed. Um, you know, even after I've gotten over all my other stuff, I was ashamed to even acknowledge that and to say that. And so I began to get to a place that I could not hide it any longer. I remember on one job that I was working actually, and it wasn't, I was trying to intentionally hide it, but you know, you're struggling with working. And, you know, again, I was very organized in my work and very detail oriented, but sometimes maybe it took me a little bit longer. And why? It's because my brain was processing how you did something. Yeah. And at the, at the time, you know, you, right, you get past all the other insecurity feelings, but now you have these other ones that have kicked in because you're feeling inadequate because of ADD. And you're thinking, oh gosh, wait a minute. I, you know, I, once I get it, I got it. Or you have to take a test where yeah. um, every, and I'm talking about even in the working world. I mean, now, the, the beauty was the many times I would speak up in situations where I was the one dealing with ADH, ADD, but I didn't realize at the time, well, I, let me see what year was that I'm trying to think. Um, <laughs> that one was, oh, this was 1999. Okay. So I remember dealing with, um, I had a test to take at work or whichever and mm. different company. And at that time, uh, you had to do like an essay or whatever, something like that. And so I remember studying it now again, because I'm also a high person of, uh, integrity, you know, yeah. um, it's a pet peeve of mine, you know, the, the line has never worked for me. You know, I'm, I'm straight yeah. up integrity person and let's just put it on the table. Let's be honest. Well, you know, some people may not agree with this, but at the time, you know, people were cheating left and right to get these tests done. Well, me, mm -hmm. I'm going through the methodical way and I'm doing it. And I remember saying to the trainers, this takes a little bit longer than what you all allow for. You know, you need to allow people a little bit more time to get this test done. <laughs> and so um, I remember saying, I said, well, and I didn't name who it was, but I said, people were cheating on this, you know, because I saw people wasn't really going through and appropriately doing it. They were just like putting the answers down and all that stuff. And I remember at the time, uh, and that I still didn't know that I had ADHD at the time, ADD at the time. I still say ADD, even though I know the umbrella is ADHD. Yeah, we, 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 so, we were all good. We were good. Okay. So I remember the instructor at that time that was in part of uh, in charge of the training had said, well, and again, remember, you're still trying to get over these other little minions, mm -hmm. if you will. And so they stated to me, uh, and I was on the line with two other people. So it was like three of us on this conference line. Well, so-and-so, whoever so-and-so was, but so-and-so has dyslexia and they're doing just fine. Now, I didn't know anything that I had at the point. I just know that I was always trying to figure out why does it take me a little longer? Why do I have to mm. reread something twice? And what, what, what's going on here? And I just didn't have, you know, uh, the answer, so to speak. And I knew things that I had begun to learn about, you know, my kids, but I still like, okay, wait a minute, mom's got some stuff going on. I was just beginning to see mom in the picture myself. And so I remember getting very uh, offended over that. And why? That was a trigger for me because they yeah. had a trigger. What is it? You know, remember those old, you know, you dumb, stupid words or whatever. So now they didn't say that, but I was, you know, feeling inadequate. It's like, oh pump the brakes you know so now mm -hmm. you know you feel like you you know you lower than you know whatever so now you're like okay wait a minute so now you're trying to pick yourself back up and still keep moving forward because now you gotta you know move forward in life and you're supposed to be positive and I'm like no wait a minute now now I'm trying to be positive I'm trying to stand on what the word of God says and all that and even with all that I still had to struggle through that and so at that time I remember um trying to uh do that and so what happened uh, I, okay. So I did the essay or I said, cause I remember working on it that whole weekend and I even had paid mm. someone, I think like $75, a friend of mine to even type it up for me. So, you know, I put all this invested time yeah. in and then later what happened, I turned it in and 
I didn't get a goose egg, but it was like a pass or fail where it was. And so I failed it. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. And because I didn't answer it the way they was, and I said, I took long or whatever. You talking about a broken hearted person. And so mm-hmm. I remember at that time, the manager did try to advocate for me and stating that, you know, I'll see, you know, if we can get this, um, you know, approved or whatever, that kind of thing. And, um, you know, because the first time I wrote it, they said, well, no, you need to answer more. I don't remember the exact details of that. So I remember doing it twice. And like I said, I paid money to have this professionally typed up so everything would be appropriate. You know, I have a certain presentation style about me. And so I was so heartbroken when they said, okay, you know what? We're going to have to let you go. So yeah, I, I got the boot. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. And so the manager yeah. did, like I said, try to advocate for me and everything. And I'm like, you know what? And again, I didn't know what was going on. And I'm like, you know, do I need to do a lawsuit here or whatever? Because I mm-hmm. also felt they, they had it adequately treated me, but I didn't yeah. quite know how to put my finger on that. And so yeah. the manager tried to do what she could at that point in time, you know, and all I remember is thinking, well, so-and-so got dyslexia, dyslexia and they're fine. And I'm thinking, okay, well, God bless her, but um, I don't know what's going on with me, but something's wrong with y'all. So my point in saying that story is that because I spoke up, uh, what I have learned at times that I have been vocal and I was not afraid to speak up and I did it respectfully. And even though I was the one, I, I call it the trailblazer or the guinea pig. So even though I was the one that had to deal with the pain of everything, wouldn't you know that I got, you know, of course, let go and all that, but wouldn't you know, they changed the process, the procedure after I was gone because of what I said. So I got mm. the boot, but it turned out good for somebody else. And I can't think right now, it was something else. There's a couple other things that I spoke up about. And, um, it, you know, I had to deal with the, mm. the backlash of it. But in the end, it turned around and it changed the process for the better for either the company mm. or, or, you know, individuals at home or whatever it may have been. So things have happened for me and that, you know, in that way. So it turned out for, you know, good because yeah, I was never had a, that's the funny thing. I never had a problem being vocal speaking up when I was younger, any of that. Yeah. Even though (laughs) I don't want to hurt people's feelings, but I had never had a problem being vocal and telling you what I thought if you made me mad. But most of the time I try not to, you know, have been mad or whatever, but then I had to just retrain myself. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't say I had to, I spent time, you know, the combination of um, not just going to church, but I let, um, and it wasn't about letting the church get in me, I, the word of God over and over again, through prayer, through supportive friends, uh, those that care about me, loved ones, and family, all, all of those, it was a one big pie together, working to knit out, uh, or a tapestry even, if you will, to make yeah. a beautiful tapestry, to make me to the point of where I am now, or as I often like to say, that the diamonds, you know, um, that, you know, that, that good old black hole that becomes a diamond, the rose, um, the thorny rose bush, and it becomes a beautiful rose, or the mm-hmm. oyster that gets irritated and becomes a beautiful pearl, um, the caterpillar that becomes a butterfly. That's yeah. how I began to see myself that, oh, okay, wait a minute, because in my first anthology book that I did, with the other authors, um, I talked about that, you know, um, those dreams being shattered and and now there's the shining diamond and not knowing to the point when I wrote that, you know, really how much that really um, mattered in that sense of time, you know, and that they're really, even though I went through all of those things and of course hearing other stories, you know, famous people's story, Mm -hmm. everyday people's story, that really, even though they went through those things, that there really was a, a, a purpose that yeah, they survived yeah. and they rose above it and they really did have a God destined purpose. Mm-hmm. And so that they could begin to live out their life. I think right now what's coming to mind is Maya Angelou and how yeah. she went through some tough times, but how she's inspired many others. Yeah. Um, uh, of course, I think of Mother Teresa, I think of Oprah, I think of Steve Harvey, I think of uh, Jim Carrey, maybe he's a famous people that's coming off the head, um, Jim Carrey, who uh, I think at one time he might have been homeless, but then he began to, you know, yeah. believe some things in, in himself and that. Now, I, you know, agree that, right, you can positively affirm yourself, but because of the way I live my life, I do affirm myself first in the core 
um, in the core part from the word of God, that is my beginning foundation yeah. and everything just growing from that. Cause otherwise I'd be off in some left field. So I need something to help keep me centered or a uh, case in point, <laughs> DD, you know, so <laughs> I can be rooted and grounded. Otherwise I'm just like, you know, all over mm. the place. I could be in the kitchen, you know, <laughs> uh, fixing dinner. And I'm like, Oh, wait a minute. Okay, so let me go over here. Oh, wait a minute. That's where I'm going to do a load of laundry. Oh, okay, wait a minute. That's where I have to put these books away. Oh, wait a minute. Let me come. Yeah, so I need some rooted and groundedness there <laughs> and accountability to help me um, stay focused and do what I have to do. So to walk up my life. So, yeah. I love that, that like, you know, you went like at your job, you went through all that, but it was for a high, you know, you, you said it all and, and you took kind of the back burn of it, but that you still, like you look back and you think, well, you know, I spoke up and it helped somebody else. And it comes back to that purpose and that passion because that passion for you is to is to have that, you know, to, to help people and to be able to do that. And I love that you kind of look back now and see that. You don't see the stigma. You see kind of, you don't see the hardship. You know, you do recognize that, but you see kind of the bigger picture, the, the more purpose behind it. I, I really love that. And, and I think that, that it takes a lot of work to do that. Thank you. Yes. Um, there is, if I had to look back and describe it in the visual sense, <clears throat> excuse me, mm -hmm. it's as if you've seen a um, landfill with um, the rubble and, you know, all the, yeah. the junk, the garbage and, the, you know, uh, you know, and how the landfill, you know, somebody cleans it out and then they now decide to put a beautiful development of homes there or, um, you know, it's been cleared out. And so now there's this new pathway there. Mm -hmm. um, or something, uh, you know, even I, I was thinking about something just recently, I actually had did a um, post about it, how there was a, there's a Dunkin' Donuts that's being built near my home um, right now. And so I remember there was nothing there at first. Well, at first it was a car wash, but then they tore it down. But I just, it, it struck me when I saw that there was nothing there, but mm -hmm. now there's something that's, and, and so my point, in fact, I did my nugget off of that that there was nothing there. Cause when they tore down the car wash, you, you know, drove by every day. Hey, you all you saw was flat, not even gravel. There was nothing there. And then now all of a sudden this building is being erected. And so there's a sign to let you know what it's going to be. And I, what kind of hit me when I looked at that, I thought, Oh my God, that's the way we are, you know, or that's yeah. the way, you know, things when it's spoken into that, you know, God, of course he's spoken. Then there's the world, the earth, all of that. Well, I thought about the Dunkin' Donuts. And again, I, you know, this was mm -hmm. most recently on my head because I just did it on my um, nugget just um, a week or more ago. And so I thought, wait a second, there was nothing there. So mm -hmm. whether you feel like your life is, there's nothing there, it's empty, it, it's just null and void. But this sign there says Dunkin' Donuts. So now you begin to see this building, this little ugly building. They got it on stilts and all this stuff that's being, you know, built. And you're like, what in the world is this? You're looking at that. First, it was nothing. But now you're like, what? That, that's half a building there. Okay, see, now you're starting to see little glass windows. Now you're starting to see the gray, um, yeah. whatever that stuff is. I'm not a construction person, you know. So whatever that cook is, and all of a sudden it begins to have brick formation or whatever it is, it begins to take formation. But it has the name Dunkin' Donuts. And what hit me when I saw that, and this is how I think about life. And again, I'm driven by purpose. So when I think of all these things, everything fuels out of purpose now. And I it's love it. Passion, right? And so I thought, it was nothing there, but the sign says it's Dunkin' Donuts. Mm. So I thought no matter what it looks like in your life, there might be nothing there. It might look like it's not even going to be built, to be fashioned, to come together. But whatever the name that God puts on it, and I kind of put a twist on it, that Dunkin' Donuts, it's almost as if saying God is saying Little Johnny, little Sally, little Mary, little Rakeem, whatever, you know, all these little different names. You're going to be what I've called you. So Dunkin' yeah. Donuts is who the construction person is saying, you know, the franchise is, okay, they're putting the Dunkin' Donuts there. They've laid stake in that. Well, that's the way I thought about it. And I was sitting at a red light when I saw it. I was like, oh, my God. Well, that's the way that God is with us. He's laid claim mm. to us. There's a stake in 
who he has called us to be and who he says it doesn't matter what it looks like. It might look like it's never going to be built. It may look like it's never going to come to pass. It may look like it's never going to have windows. It's never going to have doors, hardly going to have walls. It may need the little stilts to help hold it together, but there will come a time the stilts won't need to be there any yeah. longer. The door will be there. The windows will be there and people will be like, wow, look at this beauty. Oh my God. And there will be people that want to come. Oh, Dunkin' Donuts, I got to come here. Oh my God. I got to see what they have. So I I said, whatever the name is, it's going to be that. Whatever has been declared, it's going to be that. So we all know it's going to be a Dunkin' Donuts. Mm. So that was just the way that something hit me. And I thought, oh my God, that's the way that we are. So I was kind of yeah. inspired, inspired myself when I saw that sitting again, sitting at the red light and here it comes. <laughs> I love that. So Dunkin' Donuts, whoever owns <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts, you have inspired so much of Shell. I just love that you sat, that's what I love about the ADHD brain, that like you sat that light and then it's like, boom ha like right. all this stuff just comes to you I, I, I love that so thank you as we're kind of coming almost to the end sure. here I just want to ask you kind of I really see this purpose and passion coming out so kind of what's next with you and kind of your purpose and passion moving forward hmm. what's next yes most definitely well of course um I'm excited that I've just launched my new um devotional journal again i i really i take credit but then i can't because everything truly is what the name of my company is it really is divinely inspired so mm. i it, i'm just the conduit in a sense and the vessel that god has chosen to use at this point in time to carry out um my purpose and of course again that is to serve even more so more single women, single moms, because I, that passion to let them know that they matter, that they have purpose. It's almost like instead of the M, it's M V P. It's like you know the um, W V P that they have worth, they yeah. have value, and that they have purpose. So I'm driven by that, so that they know. And, and again, and I was sounds kind of corny as my son says, "Mommy's so corny." Well, that's just like <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, the treasures that they have on the inside. That's how I came about with the, the, um, the you know, the group there, the Diamond Treasures and the Pearls. Yeah. It's the treasures. And again, you know, the beauty of pearls, all of that. Men can still, of course, have these same treasures within, but I'm just so partial to what, um, you know, single women, because I've walked that as a single woman, you know, single mom. I have been, you know, all of that. You know, of course, I've been a married mm. woman as well. I can speak to that. But somehow there's that forgotten single woman. There's that forgotten single mom. And someone needs to remind her mm. that she matters, that there is a thriving within, that there's a heartbeat that thrives to escape out what it's carried on the inside. There's that bowl of sunshine that they may not see themselves to be. And so therefore they shine wherever they go because they're carrying the diamonds with them and the, the, the those treasures, you know, yeah. the diamonds shine brightly and the treasures, they have much value. And many times a treasure, the value is not always in the person who is buying the treasures, who wants the treasures, but it's the actual treasure themselves that have the most um, highest value. You know, it's like being in the auction, you know, like however they, you know, I can't even say it out. The guy starts saying, you know, one, two, three, yeah, can we get it better? Can we get it? Yeah, I can't even do that. But, you know, even it's at your highest auction, the treasures yeah. that are carried on the inside are greater than even all the art, all the valuables that can be sold at an auction because mm -hmm. there's only one you, only one person that has it may have similarities they might do it even if it's twins triplets but there's one that has the fingerprint to be able to do what you know um god has called them to be so yeah i'm very much passionate so of course more writing um my devotional journals are definitely I always knew that i would be writing uh and creating devotionals so um there'll be different topics that i would do my devotionals on you know, I know that at some point there'll be one to be like a 30 day devotional on faith. Mm. Um, there'll be other inspirational um, 
devotionals as well. Uh, they'll have all of the topics on what they will be, but there will be more of those. Some um, inspirational calendars will come. Uh, then at some point, inspirational products, you know, as well, where there's yeah. uh, journals that um, a little bit different from the devotional journals, but a different type of um, like a writing journal, things of that nature, maybe some t-shirts, mugs, you know, some of the typical things, but want to have a different twist on, um, you know, how I may do some things there. And um, I'm looking to, in the future, to begin a um, YouTube uh, channel, of course, and that is for the Cheryl Pearl brand, but also I have to bring my other comedic characters that I do at some point because I keep hearing people keep saying you need to do this, you need to do that, you know, um, you got to get on YouTube because, you know, you got to make people laugh. That's the laughing side of it, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, um, anything to do with comedy, speaking, writing, and coaching, those are the areas of my focus for. Um, um, my business, Diva International, but right now the heartbeat is um, rising above the stigma podcast, and it is truly what the name is, you know. So um, that's a little bit of what's to come, you know. There's more. I'm learning how you allow that to unfold, um, you know, because my love has always been radio, you know. So of course yeah. now I've turned the podcast, you know, it's my own radio style that way. So yeah. That's wow. a little bit. <laughs> I love that. We got a little glimpse, a little cut out piece of what next for show. Yes. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. And I really, really appreciate you kind of coming on and sharing your story. And I always, the thing I love about this show, it, it podcast and stuff, is that you get to meet so many different people. And yes. your story is just another different, but amazing one that I I, I really think a lot of people will be able to relate to. So, so thank you for giving yeah, us that, that piece of your life for our listeners. Thank you so much. I appreciate oh. that. It was definitely my pleasure. Definitely enjoyed being transparent yeah. um, and open up and sharing because that's something I've learned. People yeah. can't learn or relate, if you will, if you don't tell the whole authentic, organic truth, you know? Yeah. And um, many times, you know, you think you got to be perfect and, say it this way and do the way I'm right there is a presentation and style all of that but when you're speaking from your heart people need to be able to hear that they can relate because I know mm -hmm. I have felt like that oh well so-and-so's gone through that oh wow they okay Phew. yeah okay I'm not the only one somebody else can relate somebody else can yeah, exactly understand. Yeah. and that's just like so comforting at least mm -hmm. in my book yeah in my Thank book you. as well like that's one reason why I do this it's like just being transparent and authentic it, it, you know it plants a seed for other people to be authentic and transparent right yes that is so correct i agree yeah. yes awesome we're planting seeds <laughs> uh, or, yes <laughs> or building mini virtual dunkin donuts <laughs> Sorry, I just came to me. I just had to add that in. Relate <laughs> back to your story. Oh my gosh. Yes, the Dunkin' Donuts. I'm telling, and just, I was like, oh my gosh, who does that? You know, I'm sitting there at the red light. But yeah, I do get um, uh, creative things like that. In fact, I remember yeah. that sitting in that same red light. There must be something about that red light. I remember getting a poem, and I had to grab a little piece of notepaper I always keep with me, and I had to scribble it down there. And of course, God always gives me these crazy, outrageous acronyms mm. or names for it. I can't remember <laughs> all of it right now, but I, I know it's about, oh gosh, something about what, and it, again, it stood for something, but will you get naked and do something? So it's a catchy thing, will you get naked? But you have to break down what it is as an acronym, and it was more yeah. to it, I forget, but it was a little poem story, if you will, but yeah. <laughs> that red light, right? <laughs> So yes, yes. Charles, sure, just such a pleasure. And uh, so, is there anything you. that you would like to leave the listeners with? Uh, let's see here. Let me see. What can I narrow down? There's just so many things that come to mind. Most definitely, I would always say that never give up. Always go about and seek your purpose because there is a destiny for you to renew your mind as best as possible, so that you can be in full absorption of who you're supposed to be so that you can live your life free uh be empowered to influence others so that you can walk with joy and be revived and always remember that the treasures are on the inside of you so that's what i would say oh i love that 
I love that. Thank you can you. see that on your screen. Your treasures are inside. I love that. So just thank you, thank you so much, Shah, for coming on. And it's always a pleasure. And it's just always just such a joy. And and uh, yeah, I always a joy to speak with you. Thank you. Likewise. Absolutely enjoy it. Absolutely love it. Thank you so much. My thank pleasure you. and my honor. So yet again, we, we leave with another, I mean, just absolutely inspirational diary and someone that you can relate to in many ways, because I know I can, even though we're worlds apart different, we literally are worlds apart, but there's just so many relations to be able to relate to. And I just want to say, as we finish today's episode, please reach out if you want to share your story, because it can make a difference in other people's life, but also in your own life. And you know, look out for next week as we launch another episode of either series one or three, because I just have so many amazing guests that I want to get out there. So signing out and we'll see you soon. And why don't you try and unlock your treasures today? Why not? And we're out. Dear Diary. Dear Diary. Dear Diary. Today is ending. I'll check in again tomorrow. Tomorrow is a brand new beginning. Good night, sweet dreams. I think tomorrow will be... Shh.